Most of the students that I work with today are discovering their favorite music a variety of different ways, and their favorite players are being featured in places like YouTube. They're finding players on Instagram and TikTok. There's wonderful players out there playing live music that you can stream almost any time on a variety of platforms. Now, when I was growing up, that wasn't quite the case. Unless you had a recording or a VHS, uh, it was hard to come by. Seeing someone play live, seeing your heroes play live, uh, was left to maybe the opportunity to see them when they were on tour coming through your town. Back then, this is the 80s, 90s, you had to wait until you caught somebody on TV playing with someone. Live music, music being played on broadcast television was something that was limited to maybe some talk shows who had live bands, some concerts that were being broadcast on TV, or specialty music programs that specifically played content that was produced for a live audience. And don't even mention MTV. It was great, but it was not the place that you would catch a lot of live bands performing. So I thought I would sit down and talk about my 10 favorite experiences watching live music and live bass players on TV that really had a deep and profound effect on me. This is not meant to be a definitive list by any means. This is just my own personal list of things that I was fortunate enough to catch the first broadcast of and that had an effect on me later on in life, becoming a professional bassist and teacher as a career. And because of the beauty of the internet, all of these videos are available on YouTube right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link them below in the description and you can see any one of them at any time. I'd love to know what you think of my list. So let's get started with my own personal list of the top 10 base moments on broadcast television. Number 10 from the year 1983 and brought to you by... <laughs> via the BBC, the show Rock School. Rock School was an incredible specialty music program that talked about the ins and outs of playing music in a variety of styles. Dig this, the show had a house band that had a bassist, a guitarist, and a drummer. And not only would they walk you through how to tune and play your instrument, but they walked you through how to set up grooves, how to play them, how to interact with the other musicians, and they featured interviews with some of the most prominent bands of the day, including The Police and Duran Duran. It was an amazing show, and the bass player on the show, Henry Thomas, was a bad dude. This guy showed you how to slap and pop, this guy showed you how to play fingerstyle, solo. It was incredible. That being said, the bass side of the show was unbelievable. They featured people like Sting, Bootsy Collins, Larry Graham, Bernard Edwards, but the one thing that stuck in my head was the first episode I ever saw featuring the Who's bass player, John Entwistle. Now, I'm not a Who fan, I had no Who records at the time, but when I saw him playing this segment, talking about soloing, and he played this little thing, it changed me, and it made me feel like, that's what I wanna do. Number nine, a show we all grew up watching, Sesame Street, again, from PBS. Thank you, PBS. Sesame Street was one of the most innovative and amazing shows of its time when it debuted in the 70s. I was personally raised on Sesame Street, and I love it. Now, on the down low, Sesame Street also featured an amazing array of contemporary and classic musicians playing amazing music on the show while they taught. Some of these musicians include Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Smokey Robinson, Paul Simon. The one performance that sticks out in my mind, though, is from 1978, when the great singer-songwriter James Taylor came on the show to do a few of his hits. One of them included the song Up on the Roof by Carole King, played, get this, Up on a Roof. This was one of the first moments that I ever recognized what a bass was and recognized a bass player. And that was the great 
Leland Sklar, playing on bass behind James Taylor. It was as amazing as a four-year-old as it is as a 40-something-year-old. This is a great performance, and Lee Sklar helped me see what the bass was at a young age. Number eight, yet another program brought to us by PBS. Can we take a minute to just celebrate PBS, uh, for, especially for my generation? Quality music, almost in every genre, available for free. I saw a lot of great music on PBS, so thank you, public broadcasting system. Number eight, Austin City Limits. This is the longest running American musical television program in history, beginning in 1976, featuring an array of acts from Taj Mahal to Beck to Kendrick Lamar to Herbie Hancock. It's an amazing show with a great concert setup that's existed for years. Now, the bass performance from this show that I remember happened in 1990, and that was from a bluegrass group called Strength in Numbers. Strength in Numbers was kind of a supergroup that was led by violinist Mark O'Connor, and it featured musicians like Jerry Douglas, Bella Fleck, and this amazing guy I'd never heard of named Edgar Meyer. When I heard him and saw him playing on this show, it totally blew my mind. And it also expanded it to the amazing possibilities of what a bass could do beyond what I knew of at age 16. To this day, Edgar is one of the greatest bass players alive, and you need to see him play if you haven't. He blew me away on that day. Number seven, the Verve Records 50th anniversary celebration from Carnegie Hall. Another PBS production. Now, this was an amazing concert in April of 1994. Think about a who's who of jazz at the time, okay? Betty Carter, J.J. Johnson, uh, Pat Metheny, A.C. Jobim, Joe Henderson, Roy Hargrove, Herbie Hancock, Ray Brown, the list goes on and on. An amazing concert celebrating 50 years of one of the greatest jazz record labels ever. The highlight of the concert being a jam session as the last song. All these people on stage playing a blues together, and the song starts out with two of the masters, Ray Brown and Christian McBride doing a bass duet on Now's the Time. It was one of the most incredible things I had ever seen, and it still, to this day, blows me away. Number six, The Late Show. Okay, in the mid 80s, The Late Show was the Fox Network's answer to the talk shows that had been going on, like The Tonight Show on NBC. Fox wanted to be able to compete with their network, so they started this show hosted by Joan Rivers. Same kind of format. You had an incredible live band. It was shot in LA, so it was made up of amazing LA studio musicians. At any time, if you tuned in, you might see Jimmy Johnson playing bass or Abe Laboreal. Uh, the great Vinny Colaiuta playing drums. I also really remember a wonderful performance by Herbie Hancock on that show with Vinny and Abe. But the moment on that show that really did it for me happened in 1987. My best friend had really started getting into fusion music and he started listening to Dave Weckl with Chick Corea and the Electric Band. When I turned on this program in 1987, and I saw Chick Corea's Electric Band, that began a lengthy love affair that continues to this day. It's some of my favorite music, and it also introduced me to one of my bass heroes, the great John Patitucci, who, at the time of this taping, was still in his 20s. Number five, The Tonight Show. Now, this show has a long and storied history. Johnny Carson was the host for decades, there was a great band led by Doc Severinsen. They featured a lot of great music over the years. But as a teenager in the 80s, I was not really into Carson that much. It was a little too old for me. Uh, really, Letterman was a lot hipper. If you could stay up till 1230, even if you could catch five minutes of Letterman, that was preferred in the 80s. Uh, but Johnny Carson was great. The event that happened in May of 1992 was Johnny Carson retired. Jay Leno took over and he appointed Branford Marcellus his music director. Branford Marcellus, one of the leading lights in jazz, who in turn 
hired Jeff Tane Watts, Kenny Kirkland, Kevin Eubanks, the great Bob Hurst on bass, and they played incredible music every night. There's a lot of moments to choose from with this band, but probably my favorite is the first night. The first night they played, Jay Leno introduced them, and they played Criss Cross by Thelonious Monk. I mean, come on, that's amazing. Number four, Night Music, featuring David Sanborn. Now, if you know about this show, you know it was one of the greatest, most diverse network TV music shows to ever exist. Every Sunday night in between 1988 and about 1990, we were treated to some of the best music you'll ever hear. A house band with Hiram Bullock on guitar, Omar Hakim on drums, and music directed by the great Marcus Miller on bass. This was a show on any given week where you would hear someone like Michael McDonald, followed by Miles Davis, followed by the Pat Metheny group, followed by Adrian Ballou, followed by Take Six. It was amazing and amazing to watch. Again, I can choose any one of these shows, but the moment that really stuck out to me was the moment that they cut to commercial one day and Marcus Miller started playing Teen Town, a composition by Jaco Pastorius, and he was slapping it. Now, this was in 1989. He played this on his first record, but this was a good four years before The Sun Don't Lie came out. And when we heard Marcus slapping Teen Town on TV, that's a moment I'll never forget. Number three, you know, if you're in your 40s, I gotta mention it, Arsenio Hall. Hoo, 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 hoo. That's right, Arsenio Hall, cutting edge, urban, black, contemporary. It was incredible. I'm glad I got to watch it go down. It's truly a time capsule, and the music that Arsenio had on his show was incredible. First of all, the house band was killing. Jazz piano player Michael Wolf led a band that included the great John B. Williams, on upright and electric bass. Now the music that Arsenio featured on his show was also innovative and amazing. There were great performances by people like George Duke, A Tribe Called Quest, Miles Davis was on that show twice, and Arsenio even played bass a couple of times, if you can find those clips. But my most memorable moment has to be when Stanley Clark appeared on the show in 1993 with Gregory Hines. Now Stanley had already recorded one of my favorite bass albums of all time in 1988 called If This Bass Could Only Talk. And that album is bookended by two duets that he does with the late great Gregory Hines, where Stanley is playing electric bass and Gregory Hines is tapping. Stanley and Gregory appeared on Arsenio's show in 1993. Not only did they get to sit on the couch and do an interview, but after they played a medley of both of those songs and it's really amazing to see how much fun those guys are having playing together. Changed my life. Number two, Late Night with Dave Letterman. Now, like I told you before, Johnny Carson was cool, but if you were a teenager in the 80s, the goal was to stay up late enough to try to catch at least the first 10 minutes of Letterman. That show was so hip, and the band, led by Paul Schaefer on keyboards and featuring the great Will Lee on bass, was exciting and amazing to hear five nights a week. They played the most grooving, hippest bumpers going into commercials, and they backed up some of the greatest artists of all time on their show. Some memorable shows for me from late night include James Brown from season one, David Sanborn with Marcus Miller in the back playing Cowbell, and one of my favorite performances was, I think, episode one when Bill Murray came on and sang Physical by Olivia Newton-John. Will destroys that groove. But the one I'm picking for this list is when he had Lou Reed on in 1990. Lou Reed came on the show to perform his immortal hit, Walk on the Wild Side, a line that's accomplished using two basses playing in contrary motion. Although when he did it on the show, Will Lee did it on one bass, played tapped with two hands. It blew my mind and for years, I thought that's how the bassist on the record must have did it. Will Lee never ceases to amaze and this is one of my favorite moments. Okay, let's talk about a couple of honorable mentions before we get to number one. 
One for sure would be Chick Corea and Herbie Hancock performing together on the Merv Griffin Show. Uh, this is one of my earliest music memories as well. They were playing together and it featured a very young John Patitucci on bass playing his first gig with Chick. Uh, another great memory is Michelle and Dege Ocello doing her first nationally televised performance on the Jon Stewart Show in 1994, Killing. Another one would definitely be the Miles Davis Reunion Band performing live in 1992-93 on The Tonight Show. That was unforgettable. As well as several incredible performances that happened over the years on Saturday Night Live, which by the way deserves its own video. Naturally, brought to you by PBS. Number one is from a show on public television called The Lonesome Pine Special. This was a fantastic show that featured concert footage that was produced live on stage at the Kentucky Center for the Arts. It featured a variety of musicians, including Dr. John, the Neville Brothers, and Bella Fleck and the Flecktones. In July of 1991, they produced a show called Bass Instincts that featured three of the greatest bass players to ever live. Edgar Meyer, Victor Wooten, and Ray Brown. Each played solo spots by themselves, duets with each other, and then a couple of tunes as a trio featuring the three of them. It is absolutely incredible, and as a 17-year-old, to see this show as it aired definitely changed my musical path. It had a profound impact on me and continues to blow me away every few years when I go back to watch it again. If you haven't seen it, check it out. There's some amazing music happening between these three incredible musicians. That's my list. What are your favorite broadcast TV based moments? I'd love to hear what you saw on TV and how it affected you. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? If you like jazz, bass centric content, all original, coming at you every single week. Click that button so you'll know the next time that I post a video just like this one. Until next time, take care of yourself and please love your neighbor. <laughs>